So you may be feeling pretty good about your start to 2013 because you lost five pounds or perhaps you learned how to needlepoint. Well, our next guest is going to make you question if you've actually done anything since the calendar turned at all because it's now time to welcome in Johannes Hawk of Men's Track and Field here at the University of Texas. And a quick recap, you arrived from Germany to Austin in January. In March, you go out, and in the NCAA indoors, you play sixth in the hit tathlon. And then just this past weekend, you go up to Waco, Texas, and you come home, not just with the Big 12 outdoor title for the decathlon, but the best mark in meet history, the best in the NCAAs this season, and the second best mark in the entire world so far this year. So, Johannes, how do you describe what you've been able to do in four months and change here in Texas? It sounds pretty awesome, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been going pretty much perfectly for me so far. Um, I mean, not having injuries probably the key um, to going out there where we are right now. I mean, we have a great team. Um, everybody's just has been welcoming me really friendly and stuff, so I didn't have any problems joining the team. And yeah, it's been an incredible journey for me so far, and I can't complain about any part of it. And you mentioned the team, and it's good to point that out too, because it's a team title for the University of Texas as well, and all those points critical in edging out Oklahoma. But as far as your performance, I mean, I'm rattling off these different numbers like I know what it means to score over 8,000 in the decathlon, but you have a better idea to put this in perspective. So put this in perspective. How impressive is this to score what you did in the decathlon? I'm, I'm really happy about what happened those two days, and um, it's not easy to score score in a decathlon because it's two long days. It's not only being in good shape. It's not only about performing. You're always having lows and highs. And there's a lot of mental things in that too. So um, I was really happy that I could line it up like that. When did you realize that it could be a very special decathlon for you? Actually, it was uh, already after the 100 meters because um, I just blow off my PR. And that's when you know you're in a lifetime shape, like better than you've ever been before. And um, I've had a really good workout so far, and I knew in every event what I had to do. So I knew that the shape was there, and I knew what I had to do. And that's when I knew it could go really big. And you're doing this all with lifetime Longhorn, silver medalist in the 2012 Olympic Games in the decathlon, Trey Hardy there in Waco watching everything. What was that like? to have a legend like that watching this kind of performance. Yeah, um, I mean, it was a big support for me and uh, a push like at the end of, of the deck. The the pole wall was kind of rough because the wind conditions were really hard. And I don't know if you heard it, there was a train coming by in my in the third attempt or 439. Really? Starting honking and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Does that affect you? It did, it actually did. I was like pulling off about to start the run and he like honked immediately into it. And I was so like, a train Seriously. could have literally derailed your attempt at making history. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. So, um, and after the pole vault, it was like, it kind of blew off like really big numbers, like 84 or something like that. And then I knew, like I saw him coming out and he was like, it doesn't matter. You're still on a really good pace. And I knew, okay, I, I just got to finish that up. And, um, what was really an honor for me was when he said in an interview, like, he came out to see me break his record. That was awesome. where I said, oh, my God, that's an honor for me. So it was special. It was definitely special having him out there. Now you go to the NCAA championships early June up in Eugene, Oregon. The opportunity now to compete head-to-head -head with your teammate, Isaac Murphy, who's also one of the best in the decathlon. Didn't take right. part in the Big 12 championship because he's already qualified for the NCAAs. Right. Uh, so who wins that decathlon showdown? Um... I hope we go we go one and two. That's I think the the most important uh, thing for the team. And I mean, um, I have the A standard now for for Moscow. And I hope I mean he's definitely for sure capable of achieving that too. And um, I think that would be the best result with us to coming out with the standard and going to Moscow. No, when you say Moscow, you're thinking World Championships. Okay, so you're thinking big time, representing more than just the University of Texas. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm proud to wear burnt orange, definitely, and I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I appreciate all that team is giving me and supporting me, 
Uh, but I mean, in the end, uh, track and field is on a world stage, and it's about competing against the best athletes in the world, and that's where, what happens at the World Championships. So let's uh, pay a little homage to your native country of Germany. Can you give us a little German going off air? Can we look at the camera and can we say hook 'em horns or Texas fight in German? Can you translate that? Um, Texas fight would be Kempfen, Texas. Kim Kempfen, Texas. Right. Is that okay? That's pretty good, actually. Okay. Uh, we'll see how it is, though, with a little office decathlon head-to-head -head with this guy coming up later in the show.